easy because then there's no work, right? Okay. Just wanted to make sure we were all in check with that. Okay. Are you kidding me? I have one piece, and actually I could show this. There's times in between everything, so we're safe. Any rules we've learned so far were safe to use because there's no plusing or minusing. It's only multiply. Multiplication and division are both going to be friendly with these exponent rules, but not plusing and minusing. That's a whole different game, okay? Make sure that's, that's in your brain really good because you'll try. And by the end of the semester, there will be questions that try to make you cross over with the two. So notice the reason we can do what we want to do here is it's all times. It's super friendly. All the same operation. I mean, even exponents are types of times. Okay, people, does it matter if I share the two on the outside or if I simplify on the inside first? Who cares? No. Isn't that cool? That's how friendly it is. It's multiply everywhere, whatever your brain wants to do. Have fun with that. If you want to take that two and square your negative one and square your x cubed and square, if you want to share it to every single piece inside the parentheses, have fun with that. Go for it. I personally want to simplify the inside because I see stuff that goes together. It will not change your answer, but that's the cool part. Let's look at the inside, since that's what I would do. Let's see, 2 times negative 1 gives me... For my x's, how many x's do I have? How many y's? I better not forget that x until I take care of it, right? That problem looks so hard, and look, I just like clean it up really fast. So what we were looking for is we, we multiplied those coefficients, those regular numbers, to get the negative 2. We saw the x's match, same basis, so we just added the powers. Same thing for the y's, they match, so we added the powers. Okay. So we have some housekeeping. Now we still have that exponent to deal with. I share it to everything, right? To the negative 2, to the x. Let's see. I might want to use parentheses here because I could really make mistakes easily, couldn't I? I mean, is that negative being squared with the 10? Sure. The entire number is being squared. And then x to the 8, that's being squared. And y cubed, that's being squared. I share my 2 with everything. Now I have negative 2 times negative 2. What do I get? Positive or negative? Okay. And then I have touching numbers. So I multiply or add? Multiply this time? Okay. Good. 8 times 2 is? Got it. 3 times 2 is? Can I do anything else or am I done? Very cool. The hardest question you're going to ask yourself is do I multiply or do I add? That's the hardest question you got. And, and if you start crossing them? Make a really simple like, problem and see. You don't even have to use X's if you don't want to. Use numbers. Who cares? Let's still do the same pattern. Questions, comments? Are we surviving so far, more or less? Some people, some people are like, I hate this. Okay, that's okay. We'll practice it so much that you won't think that anymore. I'm trying to decide if I want to teach you all this tonight. Where's my painting guide? Okay. I think we'll cover most of it. I may, I may not do it all, though. Because I want you guys to practice this pretty important stuff. Um, let's see. But here's a question. I can't believe no one's asking this question yet. Um, anytime I don't have an exponent, it's to what power? One. What about zero? I mean, could I put a power of zero in the sky if I wanted to? You know, I mean, you've had like x squared. That's fine. That's x times x x to the first, that's fine, that's just x. x to the zero, what in the world just happened? There's no x's there. 
what can we use to symbolize that something was there? We don't want to put a zero. That'd be crazy. Because remember, if you're multiplying and you put a zero, it kills everything. And all because there's no x's, we don't want to go killing stuff. What can you always multiply by that won't cancel? What you got? A one? Okay, so if you had two and no x's, you could actually say, oh, that's the same as two times one is two. So this is pretty safe. Yeah, safe choice. Because we want this in mathematics to symbolize none of them, but we don't want it to go kill other stuff. So by definition, let's fix this problem, let's fix this question by saying, Anything to the power of zero will always be a one. Anything to the zero power. It's my favorite trick question in the world. Because it makes sure you remember this really fundamental thing. I mean, this is like a patch. It's a definition that mathematicians had to say what makes sense. How can we fix this? So that it still logically plays well with its friends, the other numbers, right? Because zero we know can be kind of crazy sometimes. We can't go in the bottom of a fraction. That's bad. And when you put it up in the power, zero is just kind of hokey like that. Like so, you know, we have to have some patches for it sometimes. So what about this thing, guys? What's that equal to? It's not nothing. Be careful. Anything to the power of zero must be. Did that just happen? Now, I'll tell you, when you get infinity later, if you take calculus and stuff like that, infinity doesn't play very well. It's like zero. There has, there's special rules for infinity when you take limits and stuff. So when it comes to real numbers, if it's a number or even a letter to a power, done. If the power is zero, it's a one. We don't care what it is, how ugly it is. And on the test, you better believe I'll give you the hardest problem you've ever seen just to torture you. Guess what I'll put for the power? And you might want to, you might want to like kick me after class. But I will have tested if you understood when I said anything that I meant anything. Anything to the power of nothing is a one. Because there was none of it. We use a one as a space holder. That was a lame example, but it was an attempt. What's this equal to? Okay, because that, that, that's the equivalent of a 1 times x squared, which is equal to an x squared. Okay. So can you put it together with other stuff? Sure. It's just a 1. Cancel it out and put a 1. That's what you have. Oh, look, this is a fun example. We shall do it. I have to give the author props on this one. Normally I'm complaining. With this particular example, I'm very happy. This is a good one. Well, the first thing I usually do is try to do stuff on the inside if I can. You know, can I put stuff together in there just to clean it up a bit? No. No, I can't. Uh, it depends on how your brain works. I go inside out. That's my brain. Uh, but you don't have to do that. You could start outside and go in. Uh, let's go inside out. So I'm going to look here. There's nothing going on the inside. If I go out one shell on my onion, I like to think about things as being layers. What do I have here? What's happening? The two's getting cleared or shared. Okay, good. Let's do that first then. It might not be the easiest way, but it's what my brain does. If your brain does something else, go for it. I really don't care. Two squared. X squared. And Y to the what? Y squared squared? Okay. Uh, what is two squared, by the way? Eight. 
And what power is on this two still? I haven't dealt with the three yet, have I? See, I already shared the two. I'm taking care of that power, but I haven't shared that three yet, so I still have to share it next. I simplified inside first. I didn't like having that two there, so I only had and wrote it as a four. Two times two is four. And with the Y, I didn't even bother writing Y2 to a two. I just said, okay, I know to multiply those. Done. It's a four. So I'm getting a little bit, I'm, I'm not showing every single step right now. It, it just starts to confuse you. Yell at me, okay? Everybody with us. Everybody with me. Okay. Let's show that three now. So we have 4 cubed, x, what's 2 times 3? 6, y, is it 4 times 3? Okay, if you wanted to see it visually, you could have written it. Something in parentheses to a power, and you see I'm touching. Some people like to see that. What is 4 cubed? 4 times 4 is 16 times 4 is 64. Good. Done. I'm not here to confuse you on that point. The point is going to say three times four. Oh, you mean multiply the base? Yeah. That one's a little bit on top. It's floating. It's only going to hit the other ones that are floating. Good question, though. Yeah. Because that 4 actually had a 1, uh, like Amber pointed out. So you're hitting 3 times 1 is 3. That's why it's going up in the sky. Okay, there's one more major thing, then we're going to kind of combine some ideas. The main next thing I want to show you guys is how to deal with something when you're dividing it. You've done multiplying, let's do dividing. How long is this page? I'm going to get curious with my extended pages. 